Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys often. Today I have something from Craig Alachy, yummy. Craig Alachy, 13 year old, yummy. But it's not the normal one. This is the Bas Amagnac barrel. Ooh. Over here in Germany we're paying about 50 euros for this. Dum, dum, dum. And it's brand new on the market. Whiskey base number 206745. So, Bas Amanik. Now, two things I must mention that are very, very nice. 46%. And look at this label. This label says some important information here. It now focuses here. It says single malt Scotch whiskey. And it says here non chilled filtered. And it says natural color. Authentic whiskey, not authentic, but it's um, it's authenticity whiskey here. Um, yay! This da 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 only says non chilled filter. Doesn't even say it in the bottle. It does say it on the tube, which is a shame that it's only here. Non chilled filtered. So, but on the bottle, there's no mention whatsoever of natural color, nor does it say non chilled filtered. So put my face in front of the camera and you can see this a little bit here. What a shame, what a shame. So now there's been very, very, um, a lot of color variations here uh, recently for Onza, for, 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 Onza, for, for our um, Craig Alechi 13. If you look at the colors here, one second, let's just pour a little bit in here. Um, you will notice a massive color difference between the two here, yeah? The dark, the 13, and the very light, the 13. Now, I've had bottles of the 13 from Clay Galaki that are also very, very light, and I've had bottles which are very, very dark, so it has nothing to do with that. I have no idea if they're using um, artificial coloring or if they're actually using more sherry casks here. We don't know. All right, so what is this? This is a brand new series here from Kleganachi called the Cast Collection. And with the Cast Collection, they're focusing on other spirits that also use warm tubs. So today, a lot of the different distilleries still use a so or now use a so called uh, tube and case condensers. So they're much more efficient, they actually give more copper contact. Um, and they actually um, use less energy. So, from the green point of view, from the environmentally um, friendly point of view, would be the tube condenser um, a little bit better. But the old fashioned way, remember you had the pot sill and you had this coil, a uh, warm tub. So, um, Dalvini uses a warm tub and Craig Alachi uses warm tub. Now, interesting enough, Amagnac also uses a warm tub. Now, for those of us that are not really, really familiar with Amagnac, me, um, Amagnac is basically just a brandy. So we have whiskey. Whiskey is made from a fermented mash of grains. Brandy is made from wine. So you take wine, you distill it, ta-da, brandy. You take wine, you distill it twice in a special region of France, you have cognac. You distill wine in a special regions. There are three in France. Once on an old-fashioned pot still with a little bit of a, um, a second then uh, column still on the side and you have Amagnac. So, and for example, this is a bottle of Amagnac. Whoops, sorry. So this was given to me as a gift from my super fans for my five-year anniversary. It's a bottle of Armagnac um, with the age here on it of 1968. Now, contrary to whiskey, where the youngest whiskey is only actually on the label, so every single drop of whiskey in both of these bottles is at least 13. There could be 30-year-old whiskey for all I know in here. Here, the oldest Armagnac, and this was from 1968. So that's the way they do things differently. All right, so we have three basic regions for Armagnac in France. We have the so-called Bass region. We have the so-called How region, H-A-U-T. And we also have the um, so-called Amagnac Tenerezi. I'm not great with my French anymore. I had it for three years, 30 years ago in school. It's been a long, 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 long time. 
Now, what is really, really interesting is that the first time Armagnac was ever mentioned, um, some people say it was 1310, other people say it was in the year 14, where was it here? Um, the history here, 1461. But still, it's much older than whiskey. <laughs> All right? So that's the way that is. Now, let's try the two of these. Here, I pay about 40 to 45 euros for this. For the 13-year-old here, I pay about 50 euros for this. Both of these are 46%. Both of these are non-chilled filtered. Only this one says natural color on it. Thank you, Bacardi, for going in the right direction with your whiskeys. Yay. Now, if you've never had an Amagnac, an Amagnac does have a very, very special taste. What do I mean by that, by that special taste here? Um, they have a special taste. They do use a special type of French oak, virgin oak for the casks. It's always been air dried for six years and they then put it in those new casks at the beginning and then they can switch it around and blend it around and use other casks as well. There are different classifications for um, Armagnac. We have the VS, we have the VPOS, we have the OX. We have different things. So we have different ages as well. All right, so I'm not going to go into the different types of things, but Armagnac has a very, very, I like it. I like good Armagnac. The best Armagnac I've ever had was from SMWS, not the whiskey, but the Armagnac, and it was called the A2.2. That was my first entry into the Armagnac world, and that was the best Armagnac I've ever had. And so I've been hunting for something very similar to that. On the nose, the first thing I get here, and it's a little disappointing for me because I get sour grape mash. I don't like sour grape mash. I don't know if you like sour grape mash, but hey, there are some things from Haribo, these wine gummies, a little bit sour grape. That's what I'm getting here. I hardly get it all. The beautiful, I love Kregarachi. I am um, very partial towards it. So it's very hard to beat Kregarachi 13. The only thing that beats Kregalachi 13, in my opinion, is the Kregalachi 17. Now, some people would say, Jason, but the Kregalachi 23 is even better. Not in my book. This is the best Kregalachi you can buy. I love this one. The 23 is right below that. The 13 is not as great as the 23. But the 23 is about three to four times more expensive than 17. I can get this for 80 euros over here. Sometimes on sale for even less. And so for 80 euros or half the price here for the 40 euros, I would still go for the Kregarachi 17. I actually did a whiskey tasting, a blind tasting with some of my fans here online a few, it's about two years ago, we actually had the two, the 13 and 17, and we picked four different independently bottled Kregarachis. And I must admit, nothing compares to the original. I have not had a Kregarachi yet that wins compared to the 13, the 17, the 23. Now, there have been some Kregarachis that are good, but they've been so overpowered by Sherry that you couldn't tell that they were Kregarachis. So I don't know if I can count that. <coughs> Excuse me, but just talking about normal bourbon mature Kregarachi, I think Bacardi does a great job of keeping the good cast for themselves. And anything that's off profile, they get rid of that. There, here, they actually, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what will be the next one. So what is the next product that they're going to use to finish? This was actually 12 years in normal casks and one entire year in a finishing cask from the Bas Amagnac. So we have the Bas Amagnac, which is basically the highest, the best region of Amagnac. You have then the how, which is actually high, but pass means low, but it has to do with the valley and up on the mountainside. And actually in the valley, you get the best Armagnacs. All right. <sighs> Sour grapes. All right, cheers. At the beginning, I get that Armagnac sour grape moment. 
At the end, I get the Amanyak Sour Grape moment. And in the middle, I get, oh, look, there's Kaiganaki, yay. But it only, it only flashes its real true identity for a couple seconds. And then that bitter type of sour type of grape note takes over. And that's a shame. Um, I wanted to like this. I love this. I'll go to that in a second. All right, here I actually have my Amagnac from 1968. This is 40%. Amagnac also has a minimum ABV of 40%. It's distilled basically once with our pot still and the column still on the side. And they actually go from farm to farm to farm and they actually distill on location and then leave the rest of the products there for the um, farmers to... Um, oh, uh, to store, mature, and then to bottle. Now this has uh, caramel. This has vanilla. This actually has a little bit of candied orange peel on here. This is nice. This is not my favorite Amagnac in the world. As I said, the SMWS A2.2 was my favorite. But this is good stuff. Much better than this over here. Mm -hmm. I do realize, I do feel that I can identify that that was not grain originally, but that was, that was a, that was a wine brandy that was distilled. But I'm sure that if you put this into a lineup and you would trick me every single time. Um, but it does have a different flavor altogether. Now, as a real true um, spirits expert, and I'm not, I am a connoisseur of whiskeys, and I know a lot about whiskeys. I do not know a lot about spirits. A real true spirits expert would be able to identify immediately the difference between maybe an Amagnac, Cognac, whiskey, um, a normal brandy, and the other types of spirits out there. I can't. I, blind, I'm lost. Even blind in my whiskey, I'm sometimes lost. Now, I do often... Claim to be uh, able to identify a few of the distilleries that I really know and really enjoy. I think I can identify blind a Highland Park. I think I can identify blind a Craig Alachy. I think I can identify a Lot 40. Um, just a few of the things that I think I can identify. And there are a few others that I might get lucky and identify on a good day. And other times you can trick me and I would go, whoops, messed up again. Now, this is the Kregalachi I know and I love. I've had this in my life. I'm going to try to underestimate at least 50 times in my glass. All right, I've had at least 50 drams of the Kregalachi 13. This is something I've pulled out of my shelf very many times. I've used it as comparison whiskeys very many times. There's many evenings that it's like, oh, I want to drink a whiskey. What will I do? And I pour 2CL in here and it's a Kregalachi 13. I thoroughly enjoy the Craig Arachi. The Craig Arachi is for me a, a C++, B- minus minus whiskey. Um, the 17 is going to be a B to a B- minus whiskey. Absolutely where I want to have it. And for that price, I can't complain at all. This is a C- minus whiskey, D+. Plus. This is not my cup of tea. Hmm. Mm. I always try to explain the Galaxy 13 as having a malty, a little bit of caramel is in there, and a tiny little bit of licking a copper wire. Now, many of you probably have not licked a copper wire in your life, but if you've ever worked as a dumb home electrician, um, I would have, instead of having my, um, my real tools, I would just bite onto the cable, pull off the coating or the protective covering, and then actually screw it together and have it then join together. And so I've, ta I've tasted copper on my lips before. And that's what I get a little bit here. I like that. It's not really a sulfur moment. It's a copper moment. It comes through warm tubs. This is fantastic. I really, really enjoy this. Now this, I must admit, and I must actually commend Bacardi slash Craig uh, for the following. They could have been selling this for 80 euros. And I'm sure people in Germany would have bought it. I'm sure people in Europe would have bought it, but no, they went for here 40 euros, here 50 euros, and here at the moment for 80 euros. 
and I must admit, I commend them. That's a that's a C for value for money. They could have asked for a much much higher price and still sold the bottles. Now I hope they are not listening to me <laughs> and going to okay. Jason said we can raise the price up thirty euros. Let's go for it at twenty. No, please don't. Um, I don't like this whiskey. I don't like the taste of this whiskey, but I love the experimental collection, uh, that cast collection you're bringing out. Maybe number two is going to be my thing. Maybe number three is going to be my thing. Maybe number four is going to be my thing. So I have two questions. Question number one, what type of other warm tub produced spirits are there that are stored, aged, and matured in casks that Kaigadaki could be using for their next cask collection? And number two, what is your favorite Kregadaki? So um, I told you it's a 17. And question number three, if you can't answer any of those, what other whiskeys do you know that have a Amagnac cask finish? Mm. All right. So those are all the questions of the day. Hopefully you can answer one of those. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting at the moment rare and exotic whiskeys. The Basque Amagnac from Kregadaki 13 is at least now in the month of April, only available in um, Germany. Hopefully there'll be a global rollout and you'll be able to try that as well. If you like that sour grape moment, this is your this is your dram, this is your thing. If you like more of the standard Kleganachi moment, the 13, the 17, and if you have very, very deep pockets, the 23, go for it. There are also some exceptional um, casks at travel retail that have made it to the market also three four five hundred euros very nice i don't know if they're worth the money but very nice especially when it's i can get a great clay clay galaxy for 40 euros hard to beat value for money thank you very much for watching thank you very much for subscribing thank you very much for sharing and don't forget a thumbs up all the best see you soon whiskey jason bye bye